Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Comic Con Podcast, episode 29. It's your man, Nemesis Prime, aka Justin, aka the Varian Whore. I'm here alone this evening. I don't know where Zach is. I really don't. I, I think he just decided to just jump ship and said, you know what? This podcast is terrible. Nah, man, he's busy this week. It's just me. Going to be a short episode. We're going to get right into a lot of the news that we have. Got some community stuff as well as some movie castings with DC and Marvel. And then we're just going to round out the evening with what are we currently reading. So let's get right into the community section. Of course, anybody you guys know out there, you could always send us any type of email, whether it's to the comic com podcast at gmail.com or direct messaging to our Instagram, the comic com podcast. So let's get right into it. We actually have a awesome question from my man, Nate trial by gods. He says, do you guys use CGC pre-screen service? How many books do you submit and have you found the final grades consistent with the pre-screen service? Is there a fee for the books you decide not to grade? Thanks, Nate. Well, I haven't done pre-screening in quite a while, but the minimum amount of books that you have to submit for a CGC pre-screen is 25 books, whether you submit it all through one tier or you break it up into the different tiers like uh, modern, expanded, uh, and so forth. I would always go modern pre-screen. So anytime I do a modern submission, I always set the minimum bar at a CGC 9.8. So what that means is of those 25 books that I'm sending in, I want 9.8s across the board on that. Now, what will happen is CGC will go ahead and start grading those. If they find that, say, five of the books are not 9.8 worthy to be encapsulated, they actually are not. You're not charged for that, but you are charged a what is known as a pre-screening fee, which is currently $8.00 for that so you'll get 20 books coming back at a 9.8 you'll get five books that are going to come back to you raw and you're also going to get a different submission uh, uh, invoice i should say so and those raw books actually come back with the encapsulated ones now there's no they don't tell you what's wrong with it uh, i've seen people that basically submit 25 books let's just say you get half Maybe you sent another submission and you got half. So now you're looking at a total of 50 books, 25 of them out of two pre-screens came back 9.8s. And then you now have another 25. I've seen people just resubmit them. And sometimes you get a good return on that. Most of the times it's because you may not look at something and see something and be like, oh man, I should have pressed this. So I recommend if you want to get 25 books to maybe sell or even flip, that's a great way to do it. Last year, when I was doing my Nemesis Prime mystery boxes, I was sending in 25 books at a clip. I was pre-screening the 9.8s because I wanted to make sure I was putting in a CC 9.8 into the mystery boxes. The first two rounds were, uh, the first round was random, like could have been a first appearance, could have been a variant, could have been a store exclusive ratio variant. The second round I did was CGC 9.8 exclusive variant cover. So whether it was like from Scorpion Comics or KRS, um, 616 Comics, Comic Mint. So they were all really nice variants. Um, as far as my, I guess, the question of, you know, are the are the final grades consistent with the pre-screening service? It's tough to say because, you know, if you're not hitting at least 17 to almost 20, books then you're like well now i'm only getting you know these i'm getting them back in 9.8s but what were those other grades were they nine sixes were they 9.4s were they an 8.5 god god forbid that happens and you really don't want to have to pay and get an 8.5 when you really thought it was a 9.8 so uh pre-screening 9.8 is definitely something to try if you have a you know a good amount of books and then you're also have a good eye for comic grading. I will say I've typically hit between the 16 to 22 range. I've never hit anything I've, above a 22, but I've never hit less than 15 or 16. So great question, Nate. Thanks so much for that one. So let's get into the community. And another thing that's really been, I wanted to talk about this with Zach, but I'm sure a lot of people out there listening to this have seen this post on Instagram. Now, there was a post that someone basically put up showing that at a local comic shop and there's different, everyone has different signs, uh, but it basically said back issue prices will be looked up at the register. Price may differ from cover price or 
and they are also old stickers. Uh, I've seen some of them that say, due to the speculation market, they are they have the right to look up the prices. Uh, there's other ones that say, you know, due to flipping, you know, you can only get one copy of a book. Now, here's my thing. A lot of people have been posting this picture and, you know, retagging it or reposting it. And I, nobody's calling out these stores. That's just kind of what bothers me. Now, I'll tell you the two stores. There's one here in New Jersey where I'm from, and there's also a shop up in Connecticut. The shop that here in New Jersey that actually has this sign, I've only been there three times. And luckily, the three times, the books I picked up were actually kind of like on my spec list. Like I knew they were going to heat up. There are obviously some Star Wars stuff, some uh, higher ratio variants that were priced, kind of old pricing. But the shop is, it's in Eatontown, New Jersey. It's called Comic Crips. Now, again, if you go into the store, you will absolutely see this sign. Will they look up it? I don't know. It's, it's in New Jersey. It's uh, South Jersey, uh, down the shore area. It's called the Comic Crypt. It's a cool store. They have tons of back issues. But the fact that you have this sign there just completely makes me like, ugh, like everything now that I'm going to look through, I have to second guess myself like hey this is a great deal are they going to look it up am i going to get screwed like i, I don't even want to walk into that store anymore it hasn't happened to me for like i said the three times that i was in that store but again i don't know if there's other shops here in new jersey the shop in connecticut that i went to i can't recall unfortunately at the time of recording this i can't recall the store because i was only up there once but i know there was another shop up north that, like I said, that said in Connecticut, that was basically, you can't take multiple copies. Uh, the scenario was, this is where I was there probably sometime in tw late 2020 in like October, early November. I went to the shop. This guy had four copies of Canaan number one, second printings just in his long boxes, not bagged, not boarded. I took them all. I walked up to the register with a bunch of other books, I had a good stack. He's like, oh, I can't sell you these. And I go, well, why not? I was like, you got four copies just sitting in your back issues, not bagged, not boarded. And he's like, oh, well, you know, you can only take one. I'm like, well, I'm willing to pay more than if you're not, if you're not going to charge me cover price, I'm willing to pay a little extra. And he's like, oh, and then he was going to start looking them up. And what I did, basically did was I was like, you know what? I was like, how about this? I'll take all four copies, $10 a piece, 40 bucks are you either going to get 40 bucks right now or you're just then you're eventually going to look them up and see what it is like it was a fr I remember it was a friday morning i was definitely the first customer in there because i was making sure that i showed up at the shop just as the store opened and he actually sold them to me for for ten dollars a piece so i got four copies of canaan number one the second print and it came back i think all four of those originally came back 9.8 after i uh, pressed and cleaned them so i can't recall the store but that's an issue that I feel like it's it's something that here in the community, if you guys out there and girls are going to post this, you need to call out these stores, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's on Facebook, any type of social media, because the people are not going to want to go to these stores. Like if you're also going to go into a store and they're immediately going to go and look up on eBay, well, then I might as well just go buy the book on eBay, because at least then I have a little bit more of a seller protection where I get it or I'm sorry, a buyer protection. And I can actually just be like, well, you know what? I don't like this copy. I can send it back because eBay's eBay slash PayPal has me covered. But again, these stores need to understand. I get it. It's a brick and mortar. hundred percent. I get that, but you got to have, you want people to keep coming back to you. So make the deals. I know at like my local comic shop, clockwork comics and cards, which I've now done two whatnot sales with him. I mean, you know, he's a great guy. He, you know, we do look up prices, but Again, you you make the you make the deal. You say, oh, you know, well, how about you know this? And that's usually what it is. You're not gonna you know, if a book is selling for a hundred dollars on eBay, he's not gonna charge you ninety five dollars for that book. Because then, yeah, then you might as well just go buy it on eBay because maybe the condition's better. You don't know that until you actually get it. But but here's my final thoughts. If you guys see uh, see these shops out there that are posting this, or if you walk into a shop. Take a picture, post it on Instagram, tag myself, tag other people and call out the shop because you know what? That'll get them upset. And then it'll be like, well, I can't, I don't want to show this anymore because they're not going to kick. The, you don't really know who you are. They don't, aren't going to go anywhere. They're just going to be less people shopping at that store. And then they're just going to shut down. We don't want stores to shut down, but 
I'd like to see people call out the shops that ha- are actually posting these things. And I, I've seen it a few times on Instagram. A couple people have tagged me in some photos. So, you know, hopefully anybody out there listening, go ahead, take a picture, post it on Instagram, tag myself and comment who the store is, man. All right, moving on out of the community section, let's get right into some of the news for the evening. So we got ourselves a Batgirl. I am super excited about this. So Deadline reported yesterday, Batgirl Leslie Grace is landing the role of Barbara Gordon in the new Warner Brothers and DC's film for HBO Max. So uh, after testing the actress this week, they have found Batgirl. Uh, the studio is was super high on the rising of the Afro-Latina star following her breakout role in, in the movie In the Heights. And sources say her audition sealed the deal as the choice. The, com- the studio has made no comment yet, but everybody's reporting that she is coming. All right. So I know nothing about Leslie Grace other than she is an American songstress and she was in this uh, show called In the Heights. But let me tell you, she is drop dead gorgeous. I am super excited for this. She's a 26 year old. She is young enough. She could play Batgirl for at least a movie or two. Man, throw the red hair on her, throw the Batgirl suit on her, and we can get some ass kicking from Gotham City, which we have not seen yet. We are seeing a Barbara Gordon Oracle in the DC Titans show. We talked about that last week with the trailer dropping. But now we're actually going to see somebody in the costume. I am super excited about this for the for this casting. She is, again, beautiful. I'm going to have to check out In the Heights. I may even have to check her out on YouTube just to see what she's like. But I think this is good because it's not a well-known actress that you're putting these roles in. It's going to be someone who's up and coming that nobody knows. And that's the exact same thing that's happened over the past between the Marvel movies, the DC movies. There are people that we don't know about until they hit and they hit it hard. So let's move on to some Marvel news for some casting. So moving away from DC, we got ourselves a Black Panther 2 casting, possibly Storm. So over at Screen Rant 2, who is Michaela Cole and who could she be playing? So Michaela Cole is a uh, African-American actress who has been casted as a mysterious role in Black Panther 2. Hmm. Could she be playing Storm, one of the first X-Men and mutant into the MCU? So she's joining the cast, of course, of Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. And a lot of people are already, you know, casting her as Storm, you know, throwing her next to the pictures of Storm in the comics. Could we see an early mutant? Uh, A lot of people are talking about that. We're going to be getting the underwater kingdom of Atlantis. We're going to be seeing MCU's version of Namor, the Submariner going to be playing in this movie. There's so much speculation of what's going to happen. Who's going to be black Panther. Are we, obviously we have uh, the cat, the actor who played Mbaka. He's coming back for black Panther too. Will Shuri be taking up the role and mantle of the black Panther? Will it be more of the door Milaje? having more of a role in this one and then maybe something in uh, black Panther three where someone actually takes over the mantle, who knows, but we do have some casting news, which is really awesome for black, black Panther Wakanda forever. All right. And that's all the news really that I have for myself this evening here on the comic-con podcast. And of course we always want to round out the evening with what are we currently reading? So this week, since it's just myself, I actually have two honorable mentions and an older series that I thought was really interesting. So my honorable mentions for the week are The Walking Dead Deluxe. This week, we just had issue number 19 come out. I talked about this series. Oh, man, it, it was a couple of months ago. Of course, they you know redid The Walking Dead. Now they're putting color to it. So this issue, there has a ton of covers for this. Why? Because it is the first appearance of Michonne. Very very awesome to see it in color was totally different the action you know her two zombie uh dogs or you guess you want to call them pets i don't even know but it was just so much cooler to see it in not black and white throwing in some color it makes it you can actually see it you actually see the contrast in the background you see things that are going on that are in the foreground as well so again one of my honorable mentions Walking Dead Deluxe, if you're not reading the series now, absolutely go back and pick up all these issues. And then my second book, and I wouldn't say this is my honorable mention. This is, 
it probably would have been my top choice, but we talked about this a couple months ago as well. We have Mom, Mother of Madness, that just came out as well. The issue number one from Amelia Clark and Marjorie Bennett. So if, what do we have is the main character. Her name is Maya. She is not only a single mom, she's a high school dropout. She works in a chem as a chemical engineer. And even it even says she even talks. Basically, she drops the breaks the fourth wall. She even says she's a part time sex worker. Very interesting. Uh, but besides that, she is also a superhero. So it's really interesting. Uh, I will say the first couple the first couple panels, it's very political politicized. Uh, there's some things that are going on about like the Me Too movement, but it's actually in the future. It's set in 2049. But other than that, past that, it's a very it's a very good comic starting off the background. You learn a lot about how she becomes and how she gains these powers. I won't really go too much of a spoiler into it, but this, again, is one of my honorable mentions. But the title I really want to get into as my what am I currently reading this week is the Captain Phasma series called Journey to Star Wars, The Last Jedi, Captain Phasma. So this series is four issues. It came out in 2017, and it's actually a very interesting book. I didn't pick it up when it first came out in 2017, but I was able to find the four issues for I think I got I bought the set for like ten dollars, which is obviously well under cover price. So. It basically picks up for Captain Phasma at the end of The Force Awakens, where Starkiller Base is basically uh, getting blown up because, and if you know and you've watched the movie, Finn basically says to Han and Chewie that they should throw her in the trash compactor. And that's immediately where the issue starts off as she's in the trash compactor trying to escape. So what happens throughout these four issues is it's the journey to The Last Giant last jedi it's exactly what she is doing before the last jedi starts they basically escape from star killer base and then they're on the run in this you know beat up tie fighter so it's it's both uh captain phasma and this tie fighter pilot uh her name unfortunately off the top of my head it, it it eludes me but it's really interesting because captain phasma actually has to like take off her attire because she doesn't want to be shown like with her you know, silver armor. She wants to stay, you know, low. So she actually takes off her helmet and she has a different looking helmet on a little bit of a, you get a little bit of a backstory about her as well, but it's basically about the captain phasma, the tie fighter pilot on these, on this planet. Uh, they basically have to work together for the four issues. And then some things happen that I don't want to spoil that leads up to the last Jedi. So that is my pick of the week of what we are currently reading that's it for myself. Zach will be back next week. Hopefully I will be at terrific con up in Mohegan sun, Connecticut. Uh, I, we may actually may not be able to do a show next week. We're going to try as best we can. I know Zach is also on vacation as well next week. I will be at terrific con. So there may not be an episode 30 back to back. We may have to do wait for another week, but that's it. Episode 29 is in the books. I appreciate everyone listening to the comic con podcast. Follow us on Instagram, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out.